Welcome to On Cooldown, the weekly WoW news show on Marcelino Online, where we hope our bromance will culminate in another successful YouTube couple channel. In today's episode, we will talk about major Mythic Plus changes coming our way in 8.2 Season 3. We will do a recap on all the cool features 8.2 will have while spicing you guys up to stay subscribed for PTR coverage. Good old Ian was too busy to do the live stream yesterday because he had an interesting Forbes interview. Well, interesting as Forbes is concerned, plus some other interviews. Lastly, hotfixes, events, WoW Classic, PvP and Crucible of Storms details, so stay tuned. Hello fellow nerds and welcome to On Cooldown because it's Friday and what better way to spend your Friday than taking a well-deserved bathroom break at work and popping one of our videos hoping that my humor is less cringy than last week's humor and the way I manage that is by not being the one giving you the news. That's right, it's hard to be funny when you are a game model set on a loop presenting the news. Wait a second, that is funny. <laughs> We're geniuses. Starting off, our boy Sleuth, among other wonderful people, visited Blizz HQ to test out 8.2 and participate in feedback meetings. He graciously provided us with insights on upcoming Mythic Plus changes for 8.2 and Season 3. Buckle up, you rogues and warriors, which also means me. Certain affixes are difficult to do in a specific combination, and Blizzard recognized this. Instead of nerfing the dungeons, they are looking at possibly removing some affix combinations altogether. Speaking of affixes, reaping is apparently too easy and they aren't happy with that. Can't argue too much about that, but we can all agree reaping is fun to do. As long as there will be a clear difference between difficult and annoying, I'm okay with whatever affix they decide in the future. As a seasonal affix, because we are not getting any new affixes until 9.0. Another talk was about trash. Okay, so, Blizzard thinks we are not doing enough trash. To get some community perspective, we had our very own Flame interview a recently resubscribed WoW player, former Mythic Raider, on his way to unlock the Zandalari trolls after his break. Thank you, Orc. I'm right here on the scene with our fellow WoW player, Sliced. Hello, hello. Hello Sliced, this is Flame from On Cooldown. Now, I just have a really quick question for you as a fellow WoW player who just subscribed recently to World of Warcraft. On the topic of Mythic Dungeon Plus Trash, Blizzard has currently gave an answer about this and they think we don't do enough Mythic Plus Dungeon Trash. What do you say to that? Fuck that sh You've heard it here first, folks. That is the player opinion of the Mythic Plus Trash. Back to you, Orc. Thanks, Flame. The argument might be missing some context, some of which might have something to do with a lot of skipping people have been doing with reaping, which is fair enough, and we are actually walking into a flawed game design territory right now. The fundamental opinion I have heard so far is that killing so much trash in BFA has been a discouraging factor for a lot of people that enjoy dungeons in Legion. Or maybe the fact that the trash was unnecessarily difficult in proportion to how much of it it is. On this topic, we all know we have mini bosses in dungeons that we would like to skip because the percentages they give is just that low. Blizzard wants to address this by giving it more percentage when killed, which is one step in the right direction. Personally, I have no issue with killing a lot of trash. The fact that it's too difficult compared to how much we have to kill is a balance issue. Either give us fewer but tougher packs where chain interrupting and or stunning is a must, or give us more packs with fewer tough mechanics. I won't be completely opposed to either, but if the balance isn't struck, the run will just feel tedious and force players to find new ways of skipping, and we might end up in a player versus blizzard war for who can outwit the other and how is that fun for anybody. They did admit that Motherload was a flawed design that they couldn't change once they started working on it, where essentially you pretty much cleared all the 100% trash before the second boss. They know about it, not sure if they can change anything, but they aren't clueless. There has been some talk about classes and how there are fewer downsides to being melee as opposed to range in terms of mechanics that can mess you up. So expect to see things like more damage taken by the melee or Sap being less useful than Polymorph or something on the line of these lines. Once we know for sure, you will know for sure. 
On the topic of classes, prot warriors and outlaw rogues will be nerfed numerically. And that just means damage output. Which normally I would 100% agree with as a prot warrior and outlaw rogue player myself. My concern is with how Blizzard tends to treat flavors of the month sometimes, where the nerf will make them unplayable in a competitive scene. I would definitely want to see Frost Decays more and Outlaw Rogues less, but if they make Prot Warrior the non-arguably worst tank in the game again, I will be really upset with it. No really, an arguably good nerf was Demo Warlocks a few weeks ago. Their damage was off the charts because AoE traits were best for single target as well and the damage was to begin with very high. You had to scroll on sims to see where the cap of the damage is. Now demo is the worst spec for single target the warlock has but the best performing AoE spec in mythic dungeons. A bad nerf example is discipline priest in PvP. I know, I know, it's not mythic plus but it's still a balancing decision that was poorly made. Flame is on the scene calling one of our lovely viewers. Who's this? Oh, hello, this is Flame from On Cooldown. Sorry to bother you, sir, but I just have a quick question. What do you think of the discipline nerfs we had in 8.1? Hey, I don't know, man. I was just sitting here listening to my Taylor Swift CD and all of a sudden I'm dead by a fucking unholy DK. So, yeah, man, they're bad. They're, they're super bad. Jesus. You heard it here, folks. Discipline Priest nerfs are bad. Back to you, Orc. On the plus side, Guardian Druids and Vengeance Demon Hunters will be buffed. Yes, Blizzard, I guess you do sometimes play the game. I am being a bit dramatic here, but just to make a point, I've said so repeatedly that even the considered underpowered specs have been performing really well in high-end content. Moving on to the 8.2 livestream yesterday, we actually covered pretty much everything that was discussed in a previous video which I urge you guys to check if you've missed it. More than this was addressed by specific content creators that had the pleasure of being invited to the creator summit and talk directly to the devs. Among a few things I am personally excited about is the Heart of Azeroth changes, Mechagon Trinket and the Combat Allies system in Najatar. These all seem like really cool progression systems we can go for which we have been lacking so far. The customization of the Heart of Azeroth seems nice and apparently we won't be charged for every change we make like we do with Azerite traits. The Mechagon Trinket is a nice, nostalgic throwback to Socket that had more individuality than that of now and although we won't use gems, the system looks arguably a lot more interesting. Lastly, a personal favorite of mine is the Combat Ally system, depending on its implementation of course. We will have a combat ally that we can send on missions and no, this is not a mission table all over again, but this guy can level up, gain abilities, do world quests, which sounds crazy cool. Will it work as a pet? Will it all be in the background and not interact with the physical world at all? Well, I guess we'll see. We plan on covering everything there is to cover once the PTR hits, which is going to be next week. If you want to know what to expect though, you can watch our yesterday's video and tell us what you think. Good old Ian has been to a few interviews lately and we will summarize a few of the major points that were discussed. The team is very happy with war mode and how it turned out, not to mention the number of players participating has increased. Totally agree, when I am leveling an alt, I am getting ganked by 120 alliance players a lot more often than before. The story so far has been controversial to say the least. A controversial story is interesting in my opinion. A controversial story for Sylvanas for so long is becoming a bit annoying in my personal opinion again. I mentioned before that her story can go a few ways, one of which I do not want to see is the garage path. To which Ian and the devs time and time again have mentioned things like her motives are unclear. Well, for how much longer, man? I mean, considering the story is fed to us in breadcrumbs, we at least on the Horde side, are being fed frustrating breadcrumbs over and over again. I don't mind having a leader that values the values of the Horde so little, but doing so for so long and still remaining at the helm in a time of turbulence seems very unrealistic even from a fantasy point of view. Is it just me? Does Blizzard just want us to hate Sylvanas so much that we forget to ask but why though? And on this topic, I criticize the Alliance for being a bit too pristine. And by Alliance, I mean not cool Tyrants and Ashvane, clearly. But it has been hinted that there is some trouble brewing within the ranks of the Alliance. 
We know from the story that Anduin is not 100% on board with Tyrande's thirst for vengeance, and that Gen Greymane doesn't agree with his peaceful nature either. What with him having a personal vendetta with Sylvanas, as well as Tyrande, I suppose, and Saurfang, and Bane. See? What is this? Why all of a sudden in BFA we all hate Sylvanas? Because, don't get me wrong, as a Horde fanboy, I don't like her. And initially that was really cool for me to dislike my leader but have a hard time arguing with her methods. But that time passed a long time ago. We defeated an artificial old god, we lost our host king and suffered a major blow to our forces. We constantly do little shady things for her with no explanation. There's a point where mystery is just starting to feel too much and we want some answers. Is 8.2 the time we get them? It better freaking be, because this is getting really old now. Again, is it just me? Another interview Ian had with the German 4 fan sites revealed something I've been obsessing about, Titanforging and Warforging. They think it's bad and want to get rid of it, but don't know how. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. Titan forging is not the greatest system in the world anymore. On the topic of story, we have the intro quest line to the new raid, the Crucible of Storms, available in game. To do this quest, you first have to defend the Naga attack, a new world quest that happens every now and again on the shores of Zuldazar and Kul Tiras. Killing the Naga drops a little token of importance. I won't spoil the quest line for you, but once you get it, it will feel very familiar especially if you are playing a Shadow Priest. With the next raid being so close, we have the Crucible schedule laid out. As always, Mythic and LFR difficulties will be available one week later. And moving on to the next week, we had some hotfixes and nerfs to Jaina this week. Her Howling Winds duration was bumped to 10 minutes up from 2 and this was applied to all difficulties. This was done to prevent people waiting it out on the boat, regenerating and essentially chilling the F out. As far as Mythic is concerned, there have been some important nerfs to mechanics, such as the Ice Block with its health being reduced by 25%. The classic server devs stated earlier this year that the content rollout plan for Vanilla was to be in 6 total phases, with not a lot of details for the PvP set of things. Not anymore, we now have an actual update on what to expect from each phase as far as PvP is concerned. Although I played in Classic, I played late into it and never really felt the initial parts of WoW where there were no battlegrounds and honor systems. I will definitely try out Classic, but we will see how much I can dedicate to it because, as far as I know, getting the top PvP title was something that only one person per server per reset was able to obtain. The last segment for today is with the general happenings of this week. The event we will have for a few more days is the Cataclysm Time Walking that seems to reward players with a fair bit of experience if you actually want to level through them. You have to be above level 80 I believe, but hey, between the heirlooms and XP potion I have friends that got around a level per dungeon, sometimes more, sometimes less. Not to mention Dark Moon Fair is out, that can provide another XP buff and we are getting closer and closer to saying bye bye to Azerite knowledge that will run out on April the 23rd. Make sure to check our discussion video on the 8.2 announced features that we posted yesterday where we go into details about everything that was announced essentially. Thank you to our Patreons who keep making our dreams a reality and for supporting us every little bit of the way. And if you also want to support us a little bit more, you can see the details down in the description. We also have an Amazon affiliate link attached to some of our favorite Warcraft and PC nerdy things that you might like. Thank you for watching the video and being awesome and I'll see you guys next time.